Hey, good morning. I'm in the baby's room again. <laughs> Let me scoot this back a little. Hi, Tanya. Hanging out in the baby's room. Good morning, good morning. Grandpa's here with me so he can keep them from, you know, uh, any safety hazards. So I thought I would jump in here before they notice I'm gone. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Oh, I left my paper in the kitchen. That's fine. Hi, my name is Michelle Wolf. You can find me at caddyshackdesigns.com. It is a lot nicer. He doesn't do the driving. He will drive on the way home. <clears throat> but um, we have a nice, we have a book on tape that we both, or a book on tape, an audible book that we both like. And um, we're enjoying listening to that. So it's uh, not that easy to find books that he likes. But this book is about, a, a, the main character is a guy in our area, like they mentioned, Ella J., who has a, you know, a criminal background and stuff, so he can, he, it's more relatable for him, a guy character. Good morning, good morning. Um, across the top at cat, top at caddyshackdesigns.com, there's tabs for everything I do. Um, there's Reiki sessions listed there, but they don't, there's not a section there for the Reiki sessions with a card reading. Those are $20 more. And I'm not, advertising it is cool uh it's i think it's based in a small town in either further northern georgia hi sarah hi nina or um like the south part of north carol north carolina is that yeah we're like right near north carolina or tennessee i don't know what can we do in chattanooga we have a few more we found out his layoffs have been extended um so what should we go see in chattanooga we're not far. We're only a little over an hour from there. I want to go to Rock City. Anybody been to Rock City in Tennessee? Um, I need to go in and add a, a PayPal thing, which I will do today. Should we go to the aquarium? I saw that. Um, I'm going to add a different section for if you want a Reiki reading, here's the tab. If you want a Reiki reading plus a card reading or intuitive reading. Here's the tab. So it's 45 for plain Reiki and 65 for Reiki with the, the extra. And I allow about two hours for that process. Thank you. Thank you. We are tired. Ruby Falls. Okay. Rock City and Ruby Falls. I've wanted to do that, and then we drove past there going to Alabama. Hi, Juliana. And I remembered that I hadn't seen, I forgot about it. So, we might as well. It's got another couple of weeks off. And I'll take all the energy I can get. Oh, you did? Where? I've really been thinking about the rose compass inside a heart tattoo thing. Hi, Estrella. Yeah, how did you know? Well, she knows. She's intuitive. You saw photos. It's gorgeous. We're starting with our Tao Te Ching day today. When I saw the books, I almost freaked out. I thought I'd grab the wrong books, but it is a Tao day, isn't it? We're on verse 31. Oh, sorry. Verse 32. You just know. You just know. I slept all night. Uh, relatively. I slept from 9.30 to 4 a.m., so I was I was pretty good with that. But it was a bummer to find out his, his layoffs had been extended after they had him drive to work. We've got that information, so like, yay! But actually, I feel okay. Like, it didn't floor me like it did the last time. Um, other things are rolling. We'll be fine. You've been awake all night, Cindy. How's your, how's your stomach? We have him at a new job, yeah. And he did talk to a, a guy yesterday about that. Good, good, good. Okay. Sacred power. Time to move on, right? You don't want to work at that. I think it'll be fine. I really do feel like this is good motivation for him to follow up with Josh, which he did last night. Hi, Sarah. We got a guy. 
we got a guy who knows a guy who knows this other guy who can talk to a guy. <laughs> Our one neighbor's grandson works at a different factory and he's trying to get him on there. I do. Mm. I'm actually fine with it. So this will give us a chance to go see Rock City and Ruby Falls, which doesn't look expensive anyway. Sacred power, right? That's what we're talking about. Sacred power. Life throws you a curveball. You access your power. Oh, Sarah, I got like, I got a note that I need to watch your scope from last night that it was super duper. Oh, Heath's layoff got extended. They had him come back to work last night only to tell him at the door that it had been extended. His cousin's mother-in-law's brother's friend's wife, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it I think overall I think it's good cuz this gives him motivation to follow up on a different job lead he had that he was kind of sort of not following up with. So, here's some fire renders but to go do that. And let's all hope for short time on a night shift. But we access our sacred power first when we get news that changes plans, right? We get in our power space Yes, Heath's new job. Oh gosh, I can't wait to watch the replay. Maybe I can listen to it when the girls are napping. The way goes on forever nameless. I should probably get started. Thank you replay viewers and web viewers who um, put up with our, well you can fast forward, so why do we care? We can chit chat all we want. You had to go to bed, well I was already in bed too, so I haven't seen any of it. I'm so excited. Sacred power. The way goes on forever nameless. Uncut wood, nothing important, yet nobody under heaven dare try to carve it. If rulers and leaders could use it, the 10,000 things would gather in homage, H-O-M-A-G-E, homage, homage, Heaven and earth would drop sweet dew and people without being ordered would be fair to one another. That's our natural way anyway. To order, to govern is to begin naming. When names proliferate, it's time to stop. If you know when to stop, you're in no danger. The way in the world is a stream to a valley, a river to the sea. So... That second verse of the 32nd verse, to order, to govern, is to begin naming. That's to begin the storytelling process. We put a name on stuff, and that's the beginning of our story. <clears throat> and when names proliferate, thanks for the shares, it's time to stop. If you know when to stop, you're not in any danger. So if you stop at the point of Simply identifying an object so that you can have a conversation with someone else with a shared language, that's fine. That's necessary to communicate. But when you're naming and ordering and governing then becomes restrictive or uh, produces emotions that are not effective for you, then, it's, then you're in danger and you need to know when to stop. Her notes say the second verse connects the uncut, the uncarved, the unusual, 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 unusable. More coffee. <laughs> unusable. To the ideas of the unnamed presented in the first chapter. Names the mother of the 10,000 things. You have to make order. You have to make distinctions. But you also have to know when to stop before you've lost the whole. <laughs> right. Right. If my nose works, my mouth doesn't work. So we can have one or the other. <laughs> you can lose the whole in the multiplicity of the parts. The simplicity or singleness of the way is that of water, which always rejoins itself. That's what they mean by the last verse. The way in the world is a stream to a valley, is as a stream to a valley, as a river to the sea. Water always rejoins itself. 
we always rejoin the whole even if we don't wake up in our lifetime we still rejoin the whole when we die when we go back to whatever we came from mm -hmm. so let's see what Stephen Mitchell has to say about this I like that a lot that just name things enough to communicate hi Susan Susan is that you that friended me on Facebook I have to go add you to the Perry fam group Thirty-two in Stephen Mitchell's book, the Tao can't be perceived smaller than an electron. It contains uncountable galaxies. If powerful men and women could remain centered in the Tao, all things would be in harmony. Okay, I'll add you in the group today. The world would become a paradise. All people would be at peace and the law would be written in their hearts. The laws would be hearts. Yes, establish communication level blaming, blank, uh, naming, but not crossing boundaries. When you have names and forms, know that they are provisional. They're temporary. When you have institutions, know where their functions should end. Knowing when to stop, you can avoid any danger. All things end in the Tao as all rivers flow into the sea. Everything is the way, similar to how all rivers flow back to the sea somehow or another. Know that they're provisional and know where functions of institutions should end. Knowing when to stop, you can avoid any danger. It is tricky. I'm finding it tricky uh, dealing with institutions. Uh, well, it's not tricky. What I'm finding opportunities for is unraveling my stories about institutions. When you're raised with governments that do provide services and agencies and things like that, you sort of just expect them to be there. So the example I have is the unemployment office. When you get laid off, you no, know, I mean, it's a kind of a deal, but it's kind of not a deal because you can apply for unemployment. But if you've not lived in a state long enough, you, you can't. You, well, you can, but you can't draw unemployment. So that's the surprise we got. And still, I feel okay about this. Honestly, I don't, I'm fine. I just want to tell you how when you start investigating your thoughts and looking at your life, there's, uh, I'm finding just sort of a, a thought that of course there will be support systems there. Of course there will be um, backup systems if you need them. But that's not true in all countries. So I think sometimes because we're, a little bit a lot privileged we don't understand that Syrian refugees and people like that when war happens in their country there's no backup options for them governments don't provide backup options in all countries um, when you're out of luck you're out of luck and there isn't any institutions to help you super privileged we are super privileged so I see as people are gathering donations for other countries yes it's hard to have conversations with people who are still bound up in these thought processes and actually sometimes you can't have conversations um, I think if something doesn't break loose Cindy quickly yeah we will we'll, we'll apply backwards to Colorado because he he works, he's always worked jobs where there were periodic layoffs, so. Um, but I actually don't think we're going to need it. I think he's going to, I think, I think we're going to be just fine. I think things are breaking loose enough and he's going to find, I just know it. I just know it. Let's just say that. I just know it's going to be okay. So people are often asking the question on Facebook in some of the groups I'm in and the people I know, why aren't we get why are we raising money for Syrian refugees? Why are we raising money for um third world countries instead of our own? I do too. I have a lot of faith. Yeah, I feel like it's I feel like it's fine. I do. Um 
we're not destitute by any means. It's, it's going to be fine. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'll take them. <laughs> uh, the reason we don't raise money for, um, the reason we raise money for other countries in crisis and not always our own is there are backup systems in place here for people that truly, truly, truly need them. We have the Red Cross. We have, well, for today, we have food stamps and whatnot. Um, well, we do have welfare systems in place. We do have homeless shelters in most cities. If you want a self-sufficiency program and you're homeless, you can usually find one. Um, those things don't exist on the coast of Greece where people are landing in rubber boats. There isn't a government taking care of those people. And in fact, their government not taking care of them is why they're riding across the ocean crammed in the equivalent of a pool toy. A floating toy. Um, people used to criticize Oprah a lot for building schools in Africa instead of spending more money in the States. And it's like, but we have schools. We do have them. Yes, they have problems. And yes, we have work to do. But where she was building schools, there were no schools. There were zero options. So, and it's her money. She can do with it what she wants to. It's freaking Oprah, for God's sake. Oprah can do whatever she wants to do. But it made me think of that whole train of thought last night when I was like, gosh, we're kind of spoiled to thinking that there's going to be an institution to take care of us. People don't think about how bad it would be to have to... Yeah. Yeah. When the... Like Susan Sarandon... Okay, hi, Charlie. Susan Sarandon went and did some work on the coast where people are landing and did some... Um, broad, broadcast some videos and stuff. And... um. When you see people, their faces as they're approaching shore and they're being helped, you did, Tanya. I'm, I have to admit, I'm jealous. <laughs> Oprah's awesome. Oprah's awesome. I would be too scared to go talk to her, but I would love to see her even from a distance. <laughs> Oprah. Oprah taught me that if she can do it, I can do it. More than once I thought that. Well, shit, if Oprah can do it, I can do it. Byron Katie, thousand names for joy. Let's look at chapter 32. 32. I have emails waiting for me. True. And you should be jealous because she is awesome sauce. Um, if you're waiting on an email response from me, I have more than one email sitting there and I promise I will get to you today. Number 32, if powerful men and women, you are, you should be. <laughs> it's fun to meet famous people. It really is. I, every time I've run across a famous person, I've always been too scared to go talk to them. Like I saw Tracy Chapman in the airport once. I really wanted to talk to her. I've always been too chicken shit to go talk to them. But it's fun to see them. Like, oh, they're just regular people. And they're magical. <laughs> if powerful men and women could remain centered in the Tao, all things would be in harmony. If our political structures were just a teeny bit more aligned, our world would look differently right now. It's okay that it doesn't. Yes. Yeah, and I, I know that a lot of them would not mind being approached, especially by someone who's polite, to just say, hey, you're cool, hi. <laughs> I just can't get past my own shyness. As you lose the filter that I call a story, you begin to see reality as it is. Simple, brilliant, and kinder than you could have imagined. There's a resonance that doesn't ever leave the center. You come to honor it because you realize you have no authentic life outside of it. Just listen. Wherever you stand, you're in the center of the universe. There's, no, there's neither big nor small. 
Galaxies and electrons exist only in your own perception. Everything revolves around you. Everything goes out from you and returns to you. And we say that a lot, but now we're actually living it. A lot of us are actually living this day to day, understanding that what comes flying out of our mouth, what goes broadcasting out of our brain, really is important to pay attention to. This may seem like selfishness, but it's the opposite. It's total generosity. It's love for everyone and everything you meet because you've been enlightened to yourself. There's nothing kinder than knowing you're it, all that is. The awareness of your own self, the only self that has ever existed or ever will exist, leaves you automatically centered. You become your own love affair. I had a question last night from a, a prior client of if something had to do with her relationship. And I find that a lot, where you constantly have to bring conversation back. Yes, the relationship with yourself. Well, what about my husband, my boyfriend, my wife, my kid, my whatever? Yeah, but it, we're talking about your relationship with yourself. And all the other relationship stuff will start to fall into place and change but once you deal with your relationship with yourself, we are so ingrained to look outward at other people and our relationship with them. But all of it starts with our relationship with us and God and Source and all of that. You address that, you'll be shocked at how many relationship problems with other people just disappear. <gasps> a baby! And a grandpa! Oh, he looks tired. Oh, thank you. Oh, what? Okay, I'm going to go watch it. I love that we're on the same track as Kyle sees. You become your own love affair. Look at your beautiful self. Look at your beautiful self, like seriously. I used to believe there was a you and a me. Then I discovered there's no you, there's only me. There aren't two to take care of or three or four billion, there's only one. The relief of that, it's enormous. You don't have to fix the world. You don't have to reform anybody. You don't have to go out to change an industry or change society. The only thing you've got to worry about is your own house. You mean there's nothing to do? That if I'm okay, everything's okay? Yeah, that's it. It's self-realization. Everything falls sweetly, effortlessly into your lap. You're not only the center, you're the circumference. You're the whole circle. You're everything outside, everything inside. Nothing can limit you. You're all of it. You're all that you can possibly imagine, inside, outside, up and down. Nothing exists that doesn't come from you. If it doesn't come out of you, it cannot exist. So what are you manifesting? Stars, universes, tree, a bird, a stone? Who is the thinker? When you're meditating, when I first teach meditation classes, which I haven't done in a while, but um, that question of as you're observing your thoughts, who is doing the observing? Always throws people in the beginning. It's like, oh, I'm looking at my thoughts. Wait a minute. Who's looking at the thoughts? What? Who's, who's listening to what I'm thinking? Who is that? The observer, the thinker, the soul. Who knows? Did anything exist before you thought it? When you're asleep and not dreaming, where is the world? When I first realized it was only me, I began to laugh and the laughter ran deep. I preferred reality to denial and that was the end of sorrow. Deep sorrow comes when you feel overly responsible and when you feel like it's your job to save the world. My friend used to describe those days as having the weight of the world. It was a weight of the world day when she felt like nothing was ever changing and all the work we were doing wasn't getting us anywhere. Um, you don't have way to the world days anymore when you recognize your only work is right in front of you or right inside of you. 
So me looking at me in the camera, I'm my I'm the only responsibility. I make my changes and if you benefit from that, it's like a double, triple good dream if that happens. But I'm not responsible for it. And too often, especially if you're sensitive and an empathic person, you take on responsibility that's not yours to take. It doesn't belong to you. And it actually deprives other people of their own process if you step in front of them and take over for them. Um, it's arrogant. And it's costly to both of you. It's costly to you and it's costly to the person that you're taking the struggle away from. It isn't fair. It's not fair. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's not fair. We, we, we grow through struggle. If you take a chick out of its egg, it can die. It has to struggle out of the egg as part of birth. Yeah. Well, we're raised to do that. We're raised to help. Only help is looks different depending on where you're at and what your gender is. If I'm struggling with something, I don't like suffering either. If I'm struggling with something, I have to be careful because Heath will literally step right in front of me and take it over. So we've argued about that. Like, let me figure it out. I can do this. I can figure it out. But he so wants to help and he doesn't want to see me struggle. The suffering is your own, yeah. That he will literally, like, physically get in front of me and take over the whatever it is I'm trying to do. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't fix this. The frost on the grass was sparkling like diamonds. Oh, how beautiful. You'd love that. Well, sometimes... Sometimes I can go, oh, I can't get this. It's too hard. And he'll come and do it. <laughs> so he knows that I work him like that. Where I'm like, oh, no. The light bulb's out. I can't see. <laughs> He's like, oh, my God. So he goes and gets the light bulb and repairs it. It's just a game. Yeah, when I, when, I, I know, you're like, it's too heavy, and my arms hurt. <laughs> or if I'm, like, walking around the house, I can't find something. Yes. Yeah, when, and seriously, and this is just a game that we do, but I want to, when I need help, I'll ask for it. Because I'm a grown-up. And if I'm going to martyr myself and I need help and not ask for it, that's also my own fault. <laughs> but the struggle of problem solving, like the Martha Beck chapter we talked about, humans love to solve problems. Uh, yeah, our little game is mutually beneficial. I get to get out of things I don't want to do and he gets to feel helpful. <laughs> Heath cooks because I don't want to half the time, so... <laughs> that's that's living in harmony right we're playing on each other's strengths I don't like changing light bulbs but I do enjoy seeing yeah you could but why would you do that <laughs> I don't want to learn I don't want he used to want to teach me how to change the oil and I know how to change the oil I don't like doing it it's a pretty good system I can change a tire. I don't want to. Ooh, the stink bugs. Yuck. Yeah. I asked Keith to get, um, like, if we have a dead mouse or something, I just can't. Or a dead bird. When we lived in the, where we used to live, the cats used to go outside a lot. And they're hunters, and they bring home presents, and I just, I can't do it. And so he would do that. And my daughter used to do it for me. You're a C-section baby. You're like, I like to make things hard. <laughs> Birth was not enough struggle. So now I got taken out of my egg too soon. Yeah, triple A's for tires. <laughs> I'm going to change a tire. It's dirty. It hurts. It hurts your hands. Heath is a C-section baby too, which is interesting. 
makes life harder. <laughs> Hear a baby coming down the hall. Um, is that a baby? She decided she's too tired to walk. Oh, you were planned. What does that do? Anything other than making things more complicated? Uh, Sarah's was a uh, Sarah was in the hospital with the twins for like three weeks before they were born. Then she got to come home. And then they went, they waited till she went into labor and then did a C-section at 32 weeks. They were just too big. They were huge. Me either. The fastest way to um, activate resistance in someone is to tell them what to do instead of offering choices or invitations these things need to be done can you help me figure out how to get them done palmetto bugs are disgusting <laughs> yeah I'd have forceps too mine was a nearly nearly died kind of birth Take three days. You can't get rid of palmetto bugs. You just have to deal with them. Um, birth stories are interesting to me. Def definitely I've been working on that one for the last year or so, which has made some shifts. I didn't want help, so I just got stuck. I was mad when they helped me get out, even though I would have died if I'd have stayed put. <laughs> but part of my birth story that I had to work on was being angry that I couldn't do it myself. That I had to have help and I was pissed, pissed off about it. <laughs> birth stories, yay! <laughs> You lost your choice of when to begin. I, we should do a birth story scope, Sarah. I'd be interested in hearing more about that. Um, I did a lot of work around that until I finally found that I was mad at everybody for um, not letting me. I never, I felt like I couldn't do it myself. I wanted to do it myself is what it came down to. I wanted to do it myself. And I couldn't, and it got, uh, and I got, and I was mad. And so I get to this, what, the, how that played out is getting to a certain point of success and then having it snatched away by some body or some circumstance. And then really hard to ask for help, which can be related to lots of things, but that was part of it too. Like, I didn't want help, I wanted to do it myself. I didn't realize it was that strong, I guess. A bird of story. And to begin, it didn't bother you. Yeah, did yeah, that's true. Tanya oh, depends on perspective. Hi, baby. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to hear more about that. I'll have to think about Morgan's birth story and see how that's playing out for her, if it is. Oh. Morgan's pretty self-determinant, so I'll keep an eye out for that. But that's... Hi, baby Avery. What you doing? Eh. Digging. And then what do you do with it, Sarah? Same thing, just awareness and picking apart the story about it so that it doesn't affect you anymore. I don't think so, Tanya. I don't think everybody has that. 
You do? I haven't really thought about it that much. Okay. Um, I would, I would think it would be more, it would be similar to any kind of traumatic event that the effect it would have on you would be relative to your number of different. Oh, okay. Well, since it's coming up, it's probably got some information there for us. Oh, awesome. You also carry your mom's birth story. Now I'll really have to take another look at Morgan. Because <laughs> she certainly has a hard time asking for help. Oh, speaking of which, you guys, I uh, told you Morgan had two interviews yesterday. She got hired on the spot at the first one, and so she canceled the second one. A kid can get a job anywhere. She's a hairdresser with management experience and... Um, master stylist level so she's she can go anywhere and get a job anywhere there's hair to cut yeah is that great it's a, it's a it's a different salon it'll be more she'll do their social media too uh, doing hair and it's a new salon so my gut feeling is she'll probably end up as a manager because she's got that kind of background she's done management and um, she's been to New York several times and picked up educator training. Yeah, and she's going to do their Facebook page. They don't have one, so she can do take over that. That gives her an edge, too. We're transitioning. Yes, yeah. I am so proud of her. She's worked so hard. It sounds like it, doesn't it? Are you saying kitty? Uh, Avery, are you saying kitty? They can say a lot more words now. They're saying I and nose and no. Ooh, are you saying kitty? What's a kitty say? She's just flopping all over the bed. We're doing the Montessori bedroom thing where you put a, the mattress on the floor and then a baby gated across at night so if they get up, they can entertain themselves safely, and when they're ready, they yell. When they're ready for you to come get, they say, Avery says, hey, hey, <laughs> hey. But they play, they wake up and play. <gasps> oh, Sarah is, okay. I will add my energy to that, too. Freedom, yeah, I love that, too. So they've got a big mattress on the floor. They're not in their cribs. They never really were in their cribs. They did co-sleeping. Sarah, that's awesome. I'm totally going to add my energy to that. The bed on the floor is working out great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, yay, yay. We want you to have more help and ease. Everyone needs ease. Well, everyone that wants ease, needs it, can have it. So, that's all I have today. Not a whole lot. Just rolling along. Everybody I know is, me too, Tanya, right? I couldn't make it without it. Keeps me on track and focused. Oh, again, if you're watching this far still, I'm at CaddyShackDesigns.com. A half hour from Tanya? That means you'd only be a few hours from me and Michelle and Catherine. Oh, Cindy, I'm so glad you found us. Beach trip. Beach trip for everybody. I want to go see uh, Cindy and Nina, too, cause, but they're on the other side. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Awesome. What are we chanting? Are we doing a Ganesh chant or a, a Nam Yoho Rengekyo chant, Omani Padmi Om chant? What are we chanting? Does it matter? 
Chat amongst yourselves. I'm going to go get, uh, oh, Daimoku. I'll be right back. I'm going to get my, um, I'll be right back. Okay, real quick business stuff. I wrote this down and then forgot to bring it in here. These are all the Desire Map workshops coming up. And um, Jody England's talk yesterday. Super cool. These are all the women's workshop, men's workshop, girls' workshop. They're all on Eventbrite. And as soon as I have two or three boys interested, we'll do a boys' workshop. <laughs> Women starts, tickets are on sale till July 11th. This one starts in February. This one starts in April. So there you go. Men, women, and girls is up. And we're just waiting for boys to show up to do a boys one. That's so cool, Sarah. I can't even stand how cool that is. Ashley Michelle, what you doing? She's walking. Wow. Alrighty. Alrighty. Cutie butt. Come here. Come on. Look at you walking. Come here. Oh. Oh, Spartanburg. She's just looking at a, a new life situation. So here's a fun fact about Spartanburg. They have the best, their animal control services is the best on the East Coast for cats. They got motivated and created a huge trap, neuter, return program for cats. What's this? What's that? Oh, a banana. Are you hungry? You want a banana? Want it? No? I gotta put you down. Okay. Say hi. Say hi. Ashley, say hi. Say hi. 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 Okay. Dispense bananas. Oh, and change diapers. Here you go. Ooh, uh, I love that they're old enough to say, to come bring you a banana and say, I'm hungry. <laughs> Here. Here, baby. Oh, she doesn't want her banana. Okay, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all the news. Oh, Tanya, I'm glad. I'm so glad. There's so much, such good things happening. Such good things happening. And like, they're just on the edge of manifesting in the physical reality. They're already in our spiritual world. So, so much love. Thank you for the extra energy and the well wishes. And I'll go watch Sarah's scope. Um, they can watch Sesame Street and I'll watch I'll watch whatever awesome thing I missed last night. I'm so excited. And so excited for everyone's upcoming changes and blessings to all of us. Sweet. Sweet. If I can catch it live, I totally will. If I can't, I'll listen to it on the way home. Because I'm interested in that. Spin. I know a little bit, but not a lot. I could definitely know more, so that would be good. All right, love you guys. Have an awesome, awesome Thursday. Okay, bye. You're welcome.